Hello there, you can already see this video is about gear. And it's mainly about do you really need the newest gear to take the best photos? Well, I am sure most of you already kind of know the answer to this question. You don't really, but there is still much more to it that I am going to talk about in this video. And mostly I am going to talk about my own journey, journey of gear, uh, mostly journey of Sony gear, uh, because I am a Sony Europe imaging ambassador. Uh, that means I do get the newest gear to use, um, but this has not always been the case. So through my own journey, I am going to talk about some old gear and new gear and what I am recommending still today, because this is probably the most important thing for you. I'm going to do this with my uh, laptop here. I have my laptop uh, and my Flickr account, because um, on my Flickr account, you can scroll all the way back and see all my old photos and see the EXIF data, which uh, lens and camera were used, very useful. But uh, before we do that, let's look at my current gear first, and then uh, we're gonna look at some older stuff. Let's get started. But before we continue, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by mpb.com and mpb is a website where you can buy used camera gear. And what's nice about it is that when you buy something, you get a 12 month warranty. So you can be sure that the products, the, the gear that you buy is actually not completely destroyed. Otherwise they would not give you that warranty, most probably. Uh, they recently started to operate in the Netherlands here, where I am from. So you're gonna probably see the Dutch website a few times in this video, because I am going to show uh, how much uh, certain gear costs right now, and if it's still worth to buy it. So thanks MVP for sponsoring this video. Continue the gear that I use right now. So like I said, I'm a Sony Imaging Europe ambassador and uh, well, I currently use the newest Sony A7R5 camera with the 1635 GM2 on it. We have here the 24, 70 GM2 and the 7200 GM2 as well. The trinity of newest G Master lenses and the newest camera. I was also featured in uh, the Sony A7R5 launch trailer, which was a big honor for me. I have taken great photos with uh, this pieces of gear, but I have also taken many great photos, maybe some of my best photos with older gear that is still very good today. So let's take a look at that right now and let's start at the beginning um, on my Flickr account. Let's do it. All right, so here we are on my Flickr account 12 years ago, a picture when I was in Hong Kong. Actually, I was living in Hong Kong back in the days, 12 years ago. And what camera did I use? A Panasonic GH2 camera. I still uh, remember that camera. It was great for video, very good indie video. I liked video. Um, but uh, it was not the best for photography. It was good, but you know, it had a micro four third sensor, 16 megapixel, which is actually not bad at all. The GH2 micro four third sensor, a small sensor, so it was very light and small. Uh, this photo, you cannot see the lens that it was taken with, but I can tell you it was taken actually with a manual lens with an adapter. Uh, the 50 millimeter 1.2 Nikon lens, I think. Yeah, that's the one that I was using. So I was using it on a micro four thirds camera, which it gave 100 millimeter. So I had a very, you know, uh, fast, longer lens, which I really had a lot of fun with back in the days. Continuing a little bit more in the style of uh, what I'm shooting today, a busy skyline of Hong Kong, spectacular skyline with some beautiful pinkish blue hour uh, that I still love to shoot in, uh, even today. Uh, 11 years ago, taken with the GH2 and look at that, we have here the kit lens. So the kit lens and the GH2 um, getting some beautiful results, uh, you know, uh, very simple F10, six seconds from a little tripod, ISO 160, that was the native ISO, I think from that camera. Uh, beautiful result actually. So I was taking a lot of great shots. If you want to see them all, please do look at my Flickr account. I'm just showing you some photos that are uh, also similar to the style of today. So here we have a classic shot in Venice, 
10 years ago Panasonic GH2 and again the kit lens. So nothing special in terms of gear. Uh, at that time, that was also definitely not the top gear at all, because you see it's the kit lens and a DH2. They were not that expensive, but I was able to take some, uh, some beautiful pictures. One more I want to show you with the GH2 here. I was using a 100 to 300 lens, uh, which is in full frame equivalent 200 to 600. I was photographing the moon and look at this beautiful full moon here. And that was 10 years ago, September 18, 2013. And uh, I was at that time already thinking like, okay, but uh, I want to add some depth to the image. So I photographed it through uh, uh, li some leaves here from a tree. And the cool thing is that um, I, I, I was a designer. My background is a design. And I was like, okay, but what if I combine two photos, you know? And actually what I did, I spent some time in Photoshop and I focus stacked these two images manually in Photoshop. And here's a focus stacked image from 10 years ago. And let's take a quick look for fun uh, what this camera would cost us today if we would buy it. So we are going to mpb.com, the website for used gear. And we can see here the Panasonic GH2. And it's about 100 euro. So for 100 euro or less, yeah, this is the Dutch website, by the way, don't get confused with the language. Yeah, so 100 euro, probably you can get the kit lens with it for almost for free. So for close to 100 euro, you can get this setup that I was using to, to take all my pictures uh, at that time. Would I recommend to, to get that today? Not really. I would recommend to invest a little bit more money. We will get to that. But if you really have no money at all and you want to start with something, something like this is actually great to start with because you can learn a lot and take great photos. So at some point, the photography got a little bit more serious for me and I wanted something, something new, something better. You know, we all want that often with camera gear. And I looked at the market and at that time, Sony was just coming up with their cameras, uh, their full frame mirrorless cameras. And it was very new, the full frame uh, sensor in a small body. And I really liked it because my Panasonic GH2 was also small. I want, I traveled a lot during that time through Asia and I wanted to keep this small form factor. So I decided, okay, let's try something like that. So I borrowed the A7, the original A7 a couple of times and eventually bought the A7 Mark II. The A7 Mark II with the kit lens. I bought it. And um, well, from that point, my photography really got more serious and also the, the switch from micro four third to full frame, it made a big leap for someone like me in photography because I liked to post process images. I cared about dynamic range, even though I could definitely work with my GH2, but um, I noticed immediately that my images were getting better. They were getting sharper. I could get like more data out of the files uh, in the dark. Uh, the ISO performance was much better. So also my photography automatically improved by getting this newer piece of gear. So let's take a quick look at some of the photos I took with my A7 Mark II. So if we look on my Flickr account, this first photo, uh, lots of you will know this uh, shot and location. I was definitely not the first one to take the shot, but this is nine years ago. I was actually inspired by Peter Stewart, great cityscape photographer who shot a lot of this stuff in, in Hong Kong. Um, and I took this picture and uh, I took it with my Sony A7 Mark II. And uh, I told you I got the kit lens, but shortly after that, I got the 14 millimeter F2.8 Samyang lens. That was a very budget lens. It cost me in Hong Kong at the time, even around 200 euros. So definitely not a big investment, but I could shoot super wide. The lens was sharp and also great at low light. So it was manual though, not autofocus, but I didn't care that much. I was shooting a lot of manual also uh, with my GH2. So uh, that was all fine for me. So this picture was with that, right? So nine years ago. And I licensed this image to a lot of brands and companies, even today still sometimes, um, because the A7 Mark II, it was 24 megapixels with a good lens is still perfectly fine today. It's a fine resolution, 24 megapixels. Uh, yeah, the image is still very good. So let's take a look at some, some others. 
So here I have a picture nine years ago in Dubai. It's also, I, I just like to show you these images because the Dubai skyline looks nothing like that from this viewpoint anymore. From this viewpoint, you cannot even see the, the Burj Khalifa normally anymore. There are so many buildings in front of it. But at that time, nine years ago, this picture shot with my A7 II from a tripod, of course, um, with the kit lens, so nothing special, A7 Mark II with the kit lens. Then uh, here in the Netherlands, the Zeelandbrug, the Zeeland Bridge. Uh, we Dutch people are very good at building bridges. This is just an endless bridge, spectacular structure. And here again, I was using the A7 Mark II and the kit lens. Here using a 10 stop filter and a very long exposure time, more than two minutes basically. Then the last one that I want to show you with my A7 Mark II was uh, this photo actually um, called Alone in the Universe. This photo really gave my photography career a big boost because it went viral all over the world. Maybe some of you still remember this photo and it was just uh, still taken with the A7 Mark II and that Samyang budget lens. And also this image, still great quality, even today, again, still licensing it, uh, image quality is still great. So the A7 II gave me a lot in photography and let's take a look how much this costs. So let's go to MPB and how much does the A7 II cost right now if I want to buy that? around 640 euro like new as new that means like new so 640 euro you can get uh, the a7 mark ii and you can get that sam yang for like uh, 200 probably let's take a quick look mpb here sam yang 200 euros for the sam yang manual version right so for 800 euro we can get uh, this kit which is below 1000 euro still produces great images after that photo, I really started to work with Sony, um, kind of the start as an ambassador, not officially yet, but I started to work uh, with Sony directly, very small department in the Netherlands. And um, well, uh, they gave me uh, the A7R2 that was just released and I said, Albert, uh, you're getting so much publicity with this photo and uh, here's A7R2. But yeah, of course I had to do a bunch of stuff for it. But I got the A7 Mark II that I still have here today, my A7 R2, that I took many, many great photos with. And the A7 R2 had 42 megapixel. That's like nine years ago, 42 megapixel. Can you believe that? That was insane for its time. 42 megapixel was the most full frame cameras. They had 24, maybe some a little bit higher, but 42 was really, really... Uh, great, and it was called the Sony A7R R2. In this case, uh, R stands for resolution, big resolution. So, got that camera, and shortly after the 1635 f4 Sony Zeiss that I have uh, here as well, still, still love that lens. Actually, sharp, has a beautiful sun star. But I'm going to show you that right now. Let's look at some pictures that I actually took with the A7R2. So here we have a photo of um, eight years ago. Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. I still love this shot with the A7 R2. Um, and you can see it's paired up with this lens, the 1635 uh, F4. Uh, took this image, uh, one of the mm, early images I took with my A7 R2. Uh, then this one, I was talking about the Sunstar. You, here you can see it, love it or hate it. I loved it at the time. Here we have a beautiful shot from the, the France Provence with the A7 R2. Again, with the 1635 F4, um, with this beautiful sun star touching the horizon here, right? Uh, then also, uh, one of my uh, most spectacular images, in my own opinion, because technically it's very difficult shot, this uh, Guatemala volcano aligned with the Milky Way that at the time I did a lot of planning for, spent a lot of effort, and uh, also the dynamic range here, you can see with the, the glowing lava and the night sky, very difficult to capture for cameras even today. Um, but this was the super early blue hour that you could still see the Milky Way uh, and the, the picture is absolutely spectacular. All right, so let's take a look how much the A7R2 actually cost right now, a used version. If you buy it in a great condition, it costs about 1000 euro, about 1000 euro. And what about the Sony Zeiss lens? the Sony 
actually is not called Sony Zeiss anymore, Sony FE 1635 uh, Vario Tessar T. 600 something so for 1600 euro you can get this setup of the a7r2 42 megapixel with that sony zeiss lens that is also still a great lens today would i recommend you to buy that the answer is actually no because the image quality of the a7r2 is absolutely great um, but it has many flaws for the technology that we are using today the biggest flaw for the a7r2 was the batteries they, they had the super small batteries and they run out so fast and they finally fixed that in the a7r3 which uh, i don't have here actually this is the four uh, because my wife has it but uh, yeah the a7r3 fixed many of those points it kind of matured the camera gave it the, the big battery that we are still using today in the newest sony camera so huge leap in battery life and uh, functionality and better grip and everything so uh, at some point i got the a7r3 and uh, let me show you some work with that so uh, let's check on Flickr. here i have a beautiful shot of, of kyrgyzstan uh, september 2018 so that is about six years ago uh, with the a7r3 and also the 100 to 400 g master lens which i still use today absolutely great lens you can see i started to get more serious with glass as well um, so yeah great lens uh, definitely not cheap but uh, super good lens so this is with my a7r3 uh, let's take a look at another shot also spectacular shot same with the 100 to 400 lens uh, even an extender, beautiful shot of the moon, single shot. And with a huge dynamic range of this camera, the A7R 3 I could get this with a single shot. So dynamic range on these cameras already from the A7R 3 is absolutely great. Here I have a shot with the 12-24 the, the, the f4 lens that Sony released at some point. Was very happy that they released a super wide angle lens, even though it was not 2.8 yet. That one came later. But uh, shot a lot with that lens and the Sony a7R 3 Now, the Sony a7R 3 is still absolutely great camera. I'm still a big fan of that camera. I still have many friends that are using that camera to take great images still. Uh, absolutely uh, great camera. One thing though, it has the Sony old menu system. So it's not that up to date anymore. The image quality though is absolutely great. Um, but I can imagine if you're shooting like wildlife, for example, or faster things, you do want a newer camera because, uh, yeah, the, the, the autofocus on, on this older cameras is really outdated compared to uh, today's technology. But I will talk a little bit more about that later. OK, so the A7R 3 let's take a, a look how much it costs. OK, so on MPB here we have the A7R 3 that's about 1600 euro okay so if we have 1600 euro and maybe the the sony zeiss for example which is 600 euro we have a little over 2000 euro 2200 which is already for a lot of people getting uh, expensive i would say um also sony has some other new lenses like a 1635 f4 power zoom there are also some third party options like Tamron has some nice gear. They're very uh, light as well and not expensive, like a 2875 2.8, like a 1728 um, 2.8 wide angle lenses. Uh, they are light, they are fast, and they are not that expensive. Uh, are they as good as the Sony glass? I'd argue maybe some of them are, but uh, definitely the autofocus is much less, much less good. Now I showed you quite some images starting with the A7 II and now the A7R 3 You would probably think the image quality, if I see them like here in the video, not that different, which is actually correct. The dynamic range from the early cameras didn't go up that much. The image quality in megapixels definitely did go up but not super crazy from the a7R2 anymore. The a7R5 right now is 60 megapixel. That's a 50% increase. Um, you know, the a7R4 already had that. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that now. But um, yeah, that is not too crazy. Just the functionality, the autofocus, the maturing of the system uh, went through a lot of big steps for sure. But image quality wise, not, not the 
the biggest steps, okay? There are definitely steps, but not the biggest steps. Anyway, I was talking about the A7R4, right? So let's let's quickly look at that. I have here the A7R4 with my 24105, still a great lens and a great kit. A7R4 took another big leap in, um, in, in, in resolution. So they went from the 42 to the 60 megapixel. And 60 megapixel on a full frame camera, even now, that is huge, right? That is, that is big and you need the good glass to, to get the most out of that sensor. Uh, so you really need the best, the best glass for that. A7R4, let's look at some images on Flickr. One of my favorite images from Greenland here, again with the 100 to 400 G Master that I still use, A7R4. Um, Milky Way images here with the 16 to 35 G Master and the A7R4. Uh, and then here we have a macro shot, also the 90 millimeter macro is a great sharp Sony lens with the A7R4. We are now getting into the kind of newer gear, even though this is still like five years ago. Um, but let's take a look at MPB, how much the A7R4 cost when we buy it, like, like new, 2,600 euro. That is still definitely not cheap for a camera even today. However, it's an amazing camera, okay? So what else? Uh, now I'm talking about the R, the big resolution cameras, right? Lots of you don't need that. 24 megapixel may be enough. Now... I would still really recommend using the A7 Mark IV. That camera, the A7 Mark IV, is 33 megapixel. So it's kind of, for a lot of people, the sweet spot for megapixels. But the, uh, it has the new menu system. It has the new autofocus system. The autofocus is crazy good. Uh, the image quality is great. The dynamic range is great. The ISO performance is great. And it has also a lot of very good VO functions. So. As a hybrid camera, it can basically do everything really well. That camera, A7 Mark IV, it can produce similar results as everything you saw kind of in this video from the R cameras. Yeah, it's a little bit lower resolution. You should know that. So if you want to print really big or you crop a lot, maybe it's not the option for you. But if you don't care that much about these high resolution cameras, the A7 IV is a great camera. So when we look at MPB, let's take a look about 2000 euro is like new sometimes i know that you can get it for even cheaper also from deals and stuff so you can probably get it below 2000 euro even you pair it up with a good lens and you have a, just a, a really good uh, kit even today and sony might talk about an a7 V um soon you know i'm a sony ambassador but i can tell you i don't know anything but you know more and more rumors are coming that maybe and and and, and you know sony has the a7r5 now for a while so a7 5 only normal that it would come at some point and uh, then the four will be even cheaper it's still a great camera then uh, another small thing vintage lenses if you really want to go uh, easy on the wallet Vintage lenses like this one are great to buy with an adapter. So here we have a, an old Russian lens, Helios 44.2. It's an 85 millimeter f2 lens. Uh, with an adapter, you can pair it uh, with your Sony cameras. Uh, everything is manual, but uh, it's great fun to play with. The quality is uh, quite good and it will cost you maybe 30 to 50 bucks, you know, dollars. So yeah, it's very, uh, it's very, very cheap and uh, you can play around with vintage lenses. I used to do that actually back in the day. I have some vintage lenses also. Telephoto, like a Minolta 135F 2.8 it was, I think, yeah, Prime. Also very cheap lens and I used it quite a lot actually when I couldn't, when I didn't want to buy expensive lenses yet. So vintage lenses, definitely another small thing to do. And that kind of brings us to near the end of this video because I, I talked a lot about my journey and about all these cameras and um, again what do I really recommend doing now when starting out so I have two things actually if you really don't have money which I get a lot of sometimes messages on social media or emails like Albert I really don't have money but I really want to do photography then buy something really, really cheap. Like the GH2, for example, for a hundred euro, you can get it and you can take great images and most importantly, learn, learn photography. That's the most important thing. Learn how to handle because that camera makes you struggle in the field when you use it now, okay? 
but this is what we all need to go through. Struggling in the field is kind of a feel for how we do photography and how we shoot. And then in the end, we can learn and take better images. Okay, I am using the absolute newest gear right now. If I would use old gear again, would I struggle? I would struggle. Would I find it less comfortable? Yes. But is it a bad thing? The image quality will, if I use like, for example, my A7R4, will almost be, well, will kind of be the same as my A7R5, but I would miss certain functions just because I have them in my newest cameras. But if I would have never have these newest cameras, would I miss those functions? No, I would solve it another way. Uh, dynamic range, I would take more shots uh, during a sunset. Focus stacking that I use now, I can do it automatically in this camera. I did, I, you saw I did it even with my GH2. I would take the shots manually. I would struggle a little bit more in the field, but wouldn't matter in the end. So do you absolutely need that newest gear? No, you don't. Do you want it? Yes, we all want the newest gear, obviously. But the question is always, you know, if you have the money, you can get it. Of course you get it. But uh, well, most of us, we cannot do that. And we have to kind of make sacrifices. And maybe we do want that newest lens because it's very good, but we don't need the newest camera. Eh? Uh, I had older cameras with newer lenses. And a lot of people have it now because you can use those lenses also in newer cameras again. So it's quite good to invest a little bit more money in a good lens uh, that you can use on, on, on also the cameras when you upgrade them, right? So what do I really recommend? Like I said, when you don't have money, get something really cheap, struggle and learn. If you do, I would definitely re recommend uh, spending a little bit more money to get something good like an A7 IV. Again, I'm talking about Sony, any other brands, uh, please put in the comments what are the best options. But uh, yeah, I'm a Sony guy. So um, A7 IV, I would still recommend to everyone. Even if it's a little bit old, you may want to wait for the A7 V. But A7 IV has all those functions, 33 megapixel, high dynamic range, good ISO performance, great video functions. Basically, it can do everything you need right now for photography, okay? There are many other options. Uh, people might have other opinions. Let's continue this uh, whole discussion in the comments. Uh, gear stuff always has many people, uh, you know, with their own opinion. And that's perfectly fine. This is my journey. This is my opinion. And I really hope that you also feel inspired that you can kind of take these nice images with this older gear um, that is still absolutely great in terms of image quality, but you might have to you know, struggle a little bit more with your camera. Thank you again so much for watching. And uh, again, please put your questions in the comment, uh, like and subscribe. And uh, well, then I see you in the next one. Bye-bye.